From the late 19th century up to the mid 20th century, a literary movement that challenged realism's representation of reality and the world began to experiment or uh, move away from uh, conventional form. Being witness to the tragedies of the First World War and being placed in the middle of a growing industrialization, a highly emotional and experimental form of art Art began to take shape, only to take them apart and break away from the expectations held in the view of previous artistic movements. Unlike that of Romanticism or Realism that revolutionized an ongoing trend, something that could have been uh, predicted within the evolution of artistic achievement, the Modernist movement declared a separation from traditional form. As art historian uh, uh, Herbert Reed put it, the aim of five centuries of European effort was openly abandoned. Many started to see this movement as a great divide between past and present. Very quickly, everyone knew what was meant by the art before and the art now. Today we will take a quick look at some of the movements in art, literature specifically, that contributed to modernism. However, this is by no means a full account of modernism and by no means should be taken as such, but hopefully this does serve as a uh, basic place to start. So let's take a look at some prominent movements, the ways in which they were expressed, and how they stood out from previous artistic movements. As a loose term, modernism has been accused of being purposefully ambiguous. But before trying to understand much of the modernist expressions, a clear definition of arguably the most distinctive feature of modernist art will be needed. This term being, of course, uh, avant-garde. The term originated from the French military used to refer to a scouting group and later used to identify left-wing French radicals protesting for political reform. However, during the middle of the 19th century, the notion that art was to be used or, uh, or viewed as a device for social change began to take hold. By the end of the 19th century, the term the term avant-garde had removed itself from its origins as a military term and away from left-wing identification and became uh, associated with artistic issues. To this day, the term is still heavily used in many expressions of art from literature to architecture. With an emphasis on aesthetics, avant-garde promotes a divergence from what mainstream notions of art should entail or mainstream understandings of what art should uh, express. An innovative and experimental concept of art developed that pushed the bounds of what could be defined as art in a way referring to its original meaning, where it would be the artists that went ahead of their own time and scouted an area that was not yet explored. From avant-garde, such movements emerged, such as uh, cubism, futurism, surrealism, expressionism, and uh, abstract expressionism. Avant-garde was seen uh, typically as a rejection or in opposition to the high culture or mass culture of industrialization, a collapse of traditional themes and the obscuring of the subject. In short, avant-garde was a catch-all term for movements that would radically depart from tradition and forcibly push the bounds of ideas and creativity. Now, it is important to note that avant-garde is not modernism and did in fact begin years before the modernist movements. It is only important uh, to know, as stated earlier, that much of the artistic movements to be found in modernism modernism were considered avant-garde. 
However, modernism is not only an art movement of the late 19th to mid 20th century, but also had uh, serious philosophical implications, as well as having given rise to social organizations in light of the emerging industrial world. Which, of course, included many factors such as the First World War, uh, new technologies that were unthinkable a generation prior, as well as a population shift from rural to urban areas. Modernism was more a state of mind or a way of thinking. Many view it as a socially progressive trend that relied on the human being to recreate their environment through experimentation, technology, and uh, the sciences. Political theorist and professor of modern history Roger Griffin called it the temporality of the new. What is meant by this, Griffin states, is that modernism sought to restore a sense of purpose to the contemporary world. World. Of course, all of this is debatable, and an agreeable definition of the movement as a whole has been of some debate. Some, such as uh, philosopher Peter Osborne, calling it a quality of social experience, an incomplete uh, project. Rejecting much of the Enlightenment thinking and realist ideologies set the stage for experimentation and new technologies that would result in creating works of art that had little to no resemblance of anything produced earlier. Modernist movements seem to divide their attention to one of two things. Either examine or analyze life and its purpose, or completely depart from any understanding of life and what it meant to live in the radically changing setting. One would either implement a self-rule, uh, processing the inner workings of their mind, which was prevalent in modernist literature, as seen with the rise of a stream-of-consciousness style of writing, or they would uh, depart altogether producing art that would be more equated to uh, fantasy. Fantasy in a very general use of the term. A dualism of mechanistic and intuitive agency that worked off one another, but was kept separate, gave all attempts of grasping a pure understanding of the time very difficult. Two very different concepts that were made nearly indistinguishable. Though it could be said of all art of the time, literature, especially that of poetry, attempted to say that which could not be said. Not for any other reason than it tried to stretch and expand what it was the human being could express, attempting to go beyond what it is that could be understood to reconcile contradictions and bring together opposing notions through mediums that had not been used to do so by previous generations. Now, these two modes of thought were recognized by the Austrian novelist Hugo von Hofmannsthal, who identified the um, overhaul of the Wordsworthian understanding of the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. This was no longer the case, not only in regard to poetry, but art in general. Now, once again, this is not an overview of modernism itself, but simply a step needed to be taken to get a better understanding of modernist literature. I personally find that people's biggest disagreement with, uh, say, an author like Virginia Woolf is this uh, modernist style that one may not be used to. Jumping into a novel like uh, Woolf's The Waves that combine prose and poetry in such a way that many, including Wolf herself, did not classify as a novel, may have the reader completely lost and confused on what it is they are reading. Of course, having a basic understanding of modernism is not necessary in reading these works, nor will it necessarily give the reader a meaning behind the work itself. But it does shed light on the significance of the work, uh, especially when considering the historical importance 
Waves, and may convince some critics that novels like The Waves or Joyce's Finnegan's Wake is not just jumbled nonsense. Well, fragments of Finnegan's Wake is for sure debatable. But instead, they were communicating something that was, and still is, very relevant. Now, of course, not all the novels written uh, at this time were these complex clash of poetry, prose, and conflicting ideas. But, as stated, modernist art explored two extremes at each end of a spectrum. On one hand, you had your Virginia Woolf and James Joyce. And on the other, you had Hemingway and Catherine Ann Porter. All are considered modernist novelists, but have radically distinguishable styles to the point that you would think they were from two separate time periods. But when one steps back and looks at the body of work, it really does start to uh, make sense on why these opposing ways of looking at reality did in fact go hand in hand. With the rapidly industrialization of the world and a war on a scale that had never been before witnessed, an existential realization of what it meant to be in the world seemed to have settled overnight. The abandonment of tradition was, in a sense, a very reasonable, universal decision. The Enlightenment had failed, and the notion of the death of God along with the rise of neo-Darwinian materialism gave a representation of a reality in which all immediately felt and very well understood, at least in a very conscious sense. Nature, a simple product of blind evolutionary processes, was no longer a safe haven for the Romantics but simply seen as resources to feed machines that were not yet understood. A sudden realization of the indifference of the universe hit human consciousness in a way that didn't demand revolution, but demanded a rewrite. Here we see modernism not as a what do we do next situation, but more a let's go back to the drawing board. With this in mind, the two seem seemingly contradictory elements of modernism begin to make sense. The examination of life and purpose and the flight from reality into a dream had to be accomplished together to make sense of the other. The waves and a farewell to arms. And on that happy note, that should set up some background for what I plan on covering next. So I do hope you join me next week, and, and until then.